about a spring ball, fairly healthy. Went into into uh, spring practice with some goals that we needed to try to reach, and I think for the most part we did. We're uh, not a finished product, but but got some good work done in and around some bad weather, honestly. But uh, eight new players on the roster that we brought in at midterm, and one of the biggest goals is trying to get them up and running. And I think we made good steps and strides in that sense. We uh, we were able to get out of spring without a significant injury. Everything's just bumps and bruises, and, and all our guys should be healthy and ready to go here in a few weeks and, and definitely be ready for fall camp. And uh, spent a lot of time talking about being more physical, more powerful up front on both sides of the ball, and, and really had a very physical spring, and, and think we uh, we definitely took some steps forward in, in that area as well, which is one of our biggest issues from last year. So both recruiting and the way we practiced, I think both are leading us in the right direction to, to address those issues. And, and really a good summer and off season, which is what we're starting into now with the kids leaving uh, from finals this week and be back here uh, June 1st ready to go for for both summer sessions and uh, August 5th uh, fall camp starting for us. So uh, now it's not time to, to recruit and camp and, and, and look up, and it'll be fall camp real soon. So with that, any questions that you got, I'll be glad to answer. All right, thank you, Coach. Our first questions come from uh, Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, caller, uh, please go ahead. Hey, Coach Anderson, this is Adam Huntsucker at the New Star in Monroe, Louisiana. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. What you got? Good. Hey, man, um, I think I was, cur- I was curious about, um, you know, just kind of looking at some of the more consistent programs within the Sun Belt. You know, the impressive thing about where you're at at Arkansas State is it's been probably the most consistent program in the conference while also dealing with the most coaching turnover because guys have kind of used this as a platform to move on to bigger jobs. So, so when you got this job, what were some of the things you found in place that kind of helped you maintain those standards? Well, I think uh, the community fan base has been phenomenal, just how solid they've been and getting better every year. You know, you look back and you look over the last year, season tickets have gone up every year, attendance has gone up every year, giving has gone up. So they've they've rallied around the program, but it all honestly starts with the administration from – uh, you know, Governor BV was in place uh, through all that. He was, uh, you know, he was really involved. And then Chuck Welch, Tim uh, Hudson, and, and Terry Mahajer, I think, all collectively had a very clear vision of what they wanted to be. And, and we have taken steps through all these different coaches up till now to do exactly that and, and to try to be as competitive as we can be in the group of five and, and really set a standard for being uh, one of the best there is in, in that division. And so there were some big steps that had to be taken and fundraising and, and facilities, which we're in the middle of, and, and being willing to schedule you know, outside of conference play with uh, some, some games that would bring some visibility. And you know, I think they've, they had a plan and they've stuck to it, and, and they've done, made really good hires along the way with guys that did a great job, even though they weren't here but maybe 12 months. They, they all brought something really – uh, you know, good to the table that they left the place in great shape. And uh, so I think we find ourselves now, you know, four, five, six years, you know, after that, and, uh, and we're moving in those directions and, and, and really uh, with $60 million worth of renovations and new building going on to, uh, like I said, fundraising and giving and recruiting going well. I mean, I, I think they've done a great job holding things together and thriving through what would be really tough for a lot of people. Yeah. In, in, ter- in terms of the in terms of the roster that you inherited, obviously you know it had to be pretty good, you know, for everyone involved. Did you come in with were there a, were there a lot of veteran players at your disposal, or what were some of the strengths of the roster? Well, you know, we didn't we did not have an extremely uh, deep senior class. We only had about six or seven seniors that that were on the field out of our fourteen. So it was not a big senior class, and I think you you could see signs of of that as the season progressed. And we were really really thin. Now, the talent level was really good. I mean, you got guys like Freddie Knighton and and Mike Gordon and, and J D McKissick and Keyshawn Lee and and uh, our testament. You've got some guys that were considered, if not the best at their position in the league, definitely one of the best. So we had really good talent, but we had zero depth, and it it took its toll on us as the season progressed. I think that depth issue was was one of the the downsides of all the transition. You know, as coaches would come in and leave, uh, a lot of these guys had been recruited by somebody else or weren't sure that the new system was going to fit. And so you had attrition that was happening throughout that that five year process that was kind of uh, it was kind of hidden. You didn't see it. It wasn't national news. You didn't. It wasn't a big 
uh, you know, uh, front page kind of conversation. But you look up, and four or five years later, we had zero depth, and we had a very small senior class. And I thought they did a great job holding it together. We just physically gave out a juice as the season progressed, and as people kind of ran at us, we were so small and so thin, we couldn't hold up. And so, I mean, in terms of program-wise, they've done a great job holding things together. In terms of physically, that's where we probably paid the biggest price. And recruiting and off-season are really the only way to to address it. And we tried, and we're working on it. And I do think we're more we're deeper and more physical than we were a year ago. We still it's going to take another couple classes to truly, you know, address all those needs uh, that you know that we have. Brian, you you mentioned some midterm enrollees. I mean, are you guys in the state right now with a program where you can get some guys that you know graduate early and come in at that level? You know, we were surprised that uh, that we were able to uh, you know win on on all eight of those. Now they're all they're all transfers or mid-year transfers. Uh, none of those were high school. Um, you know, early graduated guys. Now, we've been in those conversations, and we've had a couple. We had a couple in the first class. These were all J.C. guys that would solidify some depth issues, especially up front on D-line, uh, you know, safety spots where we lost a lot of uh, snaps with people. And, you know, typically you know, when you go into those conversations, the midterm graduation guys, J.C. graduation guys are heavily recruited because they can come in and immediately help. And, and uh, we uh, we battled what I thought were some good programs, and we were able to to uh, hang on and, and bring in all eight guys that are, that are, you know, after going through spring ball, either a starter or a number two and in the rotation. And to have all eight of them be able to do that for us, I thought was huge. And, and it's not really something that you're able to get done. Typically somebody's not in the mix or they're not quite ready and, for all eight of those guys to step in and do what we wanted them to do and what we needed them to do was was is going to be really helpful. All right. One one last question, and you know, I think that's, I, I would be shocked if this doesn't come up with you often, just in the position you're in with this program. But having seen the, all the last last you guys here go on, a couple of, to the Southeastern Conference, how much do you do you get those questions about moving on to another job, and how, how do you kind of address those concerns? Well, I got a lot of them early. Obviously, you know, I think uh, everybody would. We just kind of felt like that automatically if we were going to come in and, and leave. But uh, yeah, I think now that that we've we've shown everybody that we're here for another year, that uh, that we're trying to build things to last and some continuity, I, it's it's slowed down. You know, really, my my honest uh, answer to that question is that uh, you know I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything I can to make this place uh, you know good and and honestly great for a long time, and, and I'm extremely happy here, and I don't. I don't think about the next job. It's out of my control. God's got that in control. I, if I'll do the, the, a great job here, then, then obviously maybe an opportunity turns up. But, uh, you know, I really focus on this job. I had a lot of staff members that had opportunities to leave this year and did not. Chose, they chose to stay. Every one of them would have left for a raise at other places, a lot of them in Power 5 programs, and they chose to stay. So we're really just trying to, to kind of live it every day and not worry about having to answer it a whole lot. I mean, I think this time will tell, and people will realize that we're really happy here. We love what we're doing. We've got great administration, and I think the program's moving in the right way. And I think we've got a lot of work to do here. I just, I just think we, we're not – seven and six is not what we want to be. There's a lot more we want to accomplish. I'll let the rest of it handle itself. Uh, but uh, when God picks me up and the Lord leads us somewhere else, I hope to leave this place in a lot better shape than I found it. All right, Blake, it was good talking to you. I appreciate your time. Sure. Thanks, Adam. Our uh, next question is uh, come from the Jonesboro Sun. Uh, caller, please go ahead. Hey, Coach, this is Kevin. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, Kev. Hey, I wanted to ask you about where you ended up on the defensive line and your starters, uh, you know, the guys you feel like are your top guys, uh, you know, coming out of the spring. Well, you know, I think we're really kind of in a two deep and a half rotation. I don't know that we've solidified exactly who those guys are. I mean, I, th I think everybody kind of expect to see, you know, Chris Stone on one edge. Uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be great to see Javon Jones healthy and back in the mix, but you're going to still see Caleb Caston. Uh, you know, we, we were able to move Rosser out to the edge, which I think did help, and Chris Odom, they both had their best, you know, 10 or 15 days of practice. Uh, yeah, I think interior-wise, there's still a lot of, of movement still left to happen. Robert Monday, 
had a much better spring than anticipated. Waylon Roberson and Jake Swally were doing really, really well through all through all that. And at, at any given point, they were either a one or a two. Chooks Oda missed a good bit with with the injury, but when he did get back at the end, uh, looked really good. And and then another name that that we had not had last year that couldn't play due to uh, NCAA was uh, was Marcus Hudson, and he had a tremendously good spring. So I think it's more of what's going to be in the rotation than it is who's going to take the first snap, and that may be different every week. But we are definitely deeper than we ever were at any point last year, and we're more physical just in terms of, uh, in terms of size and stature than we ever were at any time last year. You know, when we get John back healthy, which he's been cleared to start moving forward, uh, along with what we already have, uh, you know, that front looks looks to, you know much much different than it did a year ago. And also, if you could just take a look at your secondary, I know you had some guys that you lost back there, you know, a couple of cornerbacks and, uh, and the safety as well. Yeah, I mean, we brought in Cody Brown and Alan Cinnamore. Unfortunately, Alan got, got hurt in that first scrimmage and missed most of spring. But just in our initial first five days of practice, he definitely showed up and uh, is going to be able to give us significant snaps, if not be a starter. Uh, Chris Sheems, we missed him for the entire season. It was great to have him back because he was physically our most gifted guy in the back end. Uh, so Cody and and Allen uh, and, and Chris Humes, you know, with the exit of Sterling Young, I mean, that gives you three plus money. Hunter has missed all of spring with a shoulder injury and uh, towards the end of the season was playing really, really well. Feel very good about any number of different kind of uh, rotations we can have with those guys at those two safety spots as well as p- potentially – moving one of those guys up to be involved at the nickel spot, which we've got Charleston Gurley back and healthy. We missed him for a good bit of the season as well. Uh, I feel like one of those guys will be uh, in the mix, at least for some snaps, at the nickel spot, working all three safety spots. So I feel really good about the depth we've got there in the talent level. Uh, you know, we, we missed Blaze Taylor all of the spring, so Rocky got a tremendous amount of snaps at one spot at corner. And Jamar's heart got a lot of the other. I, I think development with a guy like Nehemiah Wagner is important. We moved Brandon Bonner over the corner, and he looked really natural right out of the gate. We just need more reps with him. Uh, I think there may be a little bit more by committee there. Not sure who's going to be the established starter at one of those spots. Feel strongly that Rocky will be at the other. Uh, but we've got a couple of young guys coming in for fall camp that we can look at. There is a potential for one of those safeties to maybe even bump out and play some corner. Both Chris Humes, Cody Brown, and even Alan Cinnamore all have done that at some point in their career. And I still think there's a lot of work left to do back there, but I like athletically where we're at and physically where we're at now. It's just trying to find the right mixture of who needs to be where and for how many snaps. And I guess one more thing, if you could just talk about trying to replace Keyshawn Lee and who, you know, who steps, who steps up and does that, you know? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure, sure where that ends up. I think uh, I think one of the things that will help our linebacker position is our front being better. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I think one of the reasons that Kushan found himself having to play off so many blocks last year was that, you know, you, you had an NFL draft pick go uh, go away, and, and then we were small on top of that, and just a lot of things got to him. I think we're going to be better up front, which is, in turn, help us at linebacker. I expect Xavier Woodson and Q Heath and Copeland, you know, to battle to find out who's going to be the starting Mike, uh, and then somebody's going to end up sliding over to Will uh, and competing with Kyrie Lane, who Kyrie had a great spring for a guy that, you know, played mostly outside the box his whole career. Uh, for us to have moved him, he just naturally has a nose for the ball and always ends up around it. Uh, I, I still think, uh, you know, Coach Coughlin's got a lot of work to do there, and trying to solidify who's most comfortable. It was different every week. Uh, you know, there was guys that had good days and bad days. There's not enough consistency there. They all have the range and the ability to play the position. We're just trying to find you know, who's going to be the most consistent uh, and, and can, can get us where we need to be and, and, and play. At any point, I guess maybe uh, either either one or two of those guys could be on the field at any time, depending on who ends up at Mike and who ends up sliding over to, to Will Linebacker. All right. Thank you, Coach. Sure. Thank you, Coach, and uh, thank you to our members of the media. We do appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And I know we ran about five minutes over there, guys, and we, we still had some more on the queue. Uh, if you'd like to arrange an interview with uh, Coach Anderson, please call uh, Jerry Scott in the Arkansas State uh, Media Relations Office. If everyone could stand by, we'll place our members of the media on hold, and we'll be back with uh, Neil Brown, the head coach. Troy, please stand by. <laughs> 